The next thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss some of the uh, complications that we see in Lewis structures. In particular, we're going to see that it's very often possible to have more than one correct Lewis structure for a given formula. Okay, so some terminology. Isomers is a general term that we use to indicate molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structures in some way. We're going to see that there's many that there are several different ways that molecules can be isomers. Most of those ways involve differences in the three-dimensional structure, and we're going to talk about those in a later chapter. Right now, we're going to limit ourselves to talking about what we call constitutional isomers. Constitutional isomers are molecules. They have the same formula, but the atoms are connected together in a different way in the Lewis structures. One thing I'm going to warn you is that organic chemists tend to be kind of lazy, and we take shortcuts with lots of things, including with our language. So the term isomer is sometimes used just as these two are isomers. And they don't tell, they don't specify what type of isomer. If the type of isomer is not specified, if they just say these two are, molecules are isomers, they mean constitutional isomers. Okay, now let's talk about connectivity. Connectivity is the order that atoms are connected in the molecule. So Molecules have different connectivity when they have Lewis, different Lewis structure skeletons. So remember in our Lewis structure uh, thing, we talked about drawing the skeleton and then adding the multiple bonds and the lone pairs and stuff like that? Well, when we have different skeletons, ignoring the multiple bonds, ignoring the lone pairs, if those skeletons are different, if they're connected together differently, those are constitutional isomers. We can sort of read a Lewis structure in order to determine the connectivity. Let me show you how this works. We would say, here's a carbon with three hydrogens attached, Cor connected directly to an oxygen, which is connected to a carbon with three hydrogens attached. If we compare that structure to this one, here's a carbon with three hydrogens attached, connected to a carbon with two hydrogens attached, connected to an oxygen, connected to a hydrogen. So you see how those verbal descriptions are different. In the past, constitutional isomers were often called structural isomers. Um, that has kind of fallen out of favor. Um, because really structure means so many different things. So instead, as I indicated earlier, constitutional isomer is such a typical type of isomer that many chemists will just call them isomers. And so if you hear the term isomer by itself, it probably means constitutional isomer unless another type of isomer is explicitly indicated. Now, one of the things you need to understand about Lewis structures and isomers is that Lewis structures do not show three dimensions. They literally only show that things are connected. So if we change, quote unquote, the shape of that Lewis structure, the connectivity doesn't necessarily change. And therefore, we will not be drawing an isomer. So here's a very simple example. If we look at this Lewis structure, we have carbon with three hydrogens, connected to carbon with two hydrogens, connected to carbon with three hydrogens. In this structure, we have carbon with three hydrogens, connected to carbon with two hydrogens, with sort of a 90 degree turn, connected to a carbon with three hydrogens. Well, that 90 degree turn is not relevant to its connectivity, because this is not a three dimensional representation. This carbon with two hydrogens is still connected here to a carbon with three hydrogens. We read them identically. Therefore, they are not constitutional isomers. They are identical structures. 
Once we start drawing constitutional isomers of carbon-containing molecules, we can see that carbon in particular is, is very special because it can have different numbers of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms attached within a molecule. So we're going to call these carbons that have different numbers of carbons, different numbers of hydrogens, or different numbers of other atoms attached, we're going to call these types or classes of carbons. And we're going to actually come up with a classification scheme. Now, this classification scheme only applies to carbons that are not part of a multiple bond. In other words, the carbons have only single bonds or incomplete octets attached. What we do to classify a carbon is we look at the given carbon. So here's a carbon. See that right there? In a Lewis structure. And we ask ourselves, how many carbon atoms are directly attached by a bond to this carbon atom. So we look at this carbon atom when we see this bond has a hydrogen, this bond has a hydrogen, this bond has a hydrogen, this bond has a carbon. So we have one carbon atom directly attached. We come up here, one carbon atom directly attached, we call that a primary carbon. Now primary is abbreviated one degree but we generally don't call them one degree, we read this as one prime or primary, okay? If we look at this carbon, it has two hydrogens directly attached and then it has a carbon directly attached here, carbon directly attached here, that's two carbons directly attached, that's a secondary carbon, and so forth. So you can work through this example. This is a skill that you are going to need to have and you're going to need to get it right 100% of the time. It's what I call a 100% skill. So we're going to have some homework problems where we practice this skill and we're going to need to do this. The reason for this is that we're going to see in a later chapter, which is probably five or six weeks from now, we are going to see that different classes of carbon can have different reactivities. They can change the reactivity of the molecule. So we need to know what class of carbon we're working with when we look at a carbon in a molecule.